Wood-burning stoves have never been more popular, as lots of people try to make their homes cosy and full of character. But installing one isn't straightforward. There are building regs there to protect us, so you can't just have a go. Like any heating appliance, they can be extremely dangerous if not fitted properly. Many people choose a trained professional. But what happens when your trained professional turns out to be a fake? Over a million Brits now have a wood-burning stove in their home, with around 200,000 people a year having one installed. These stoves are relatively complex to put in, and safety experts recommend hiring a professional. Most professional installers belong to Heating Equipment Testing and Approval Scheme, known as HEATUS. It's a trade body that provides training and accreditation. Bruce Allen is the MD at HEATUS, and he's seen demand for the stoves soar. The past ten years saw uh, an unprecedented growth in stove use, where stoves have come forward in design greatly. To become a registered HEATUS installer, you need to undertake several days of training and then demonstrate to a HEATUS inspector that you can safely install a stove. These checks will cost five to eight hundred pounds, but recently HEATUS have had reports of a number of installers faking their credentials. One of the problems we find is that these guys, they really don't want to put the time, the effort and the money into doing the job properly, so they're not doing the, the, the real courses, they're faking their knowledge and they're, they're trying to sort of circumvent the costs of training and the costs of joining a, um, a scheme. And what's happening is they really operate in the black market, so it's, it's about avoiding all of the rules and regulations for them, it's about reducing their costs and maximising their income without actually doing the job properly. And basically, it's a way of ripping off customers. In Caerphilly, Wales, Lisa Watkins was looking for a registered installer to fit a wood-burning stove. But fake heaters installers are operating across the country, as she was about to find out. So we were trying to create a family home. Um, we'd had our daughter, she was around 18 months old. Um, we decided that we would like to put a second wood burner in the house and we were looking around for recommendations and Luke was recommended to us. The installer, Luke Hathaway, arrived and offered Lisa a quote. He told her he was both HEATUS registered and trained. While it was true that Hathaway had started a HEATUS training course, he'd failed to complete it. The job took longer than Luke had promised, but eventually Lisa's stove was ready to light. He left us with a small bunch of kindling and told us that it was ready to light within a sort of hour after he'd left, it just to make sure that all the fire cements had dried. Um, after about two minutes, the room just filled with smoke. The smoke was coming out of all of the vents of the wood burner, and I had to pick up my 18-month-old daughter and run out of the house. Lisa was understandably terrified. I was just really, really frightened at the time. I didn't really know what was going on. We expected to have a fully functioning wood burner and instead our home was filling with smoke. Um, I think there were flames coming out of the back at one point. I mean, I didn't know if the house was going to catch fire. I was just really frightened for my daughter and my partner. Fortunately, Lisa's partner reacted quickly, putting the fire out, but the situation could have been much worse. Luckily, it was only a small amount of kindling. Um, if we'd have, you know, shut the door, put a log on it and left it, then the whole house could have caught. Lisa contacted Heaters, but they were powerless to act. At this point, we couldn't remove Luke from a register that he wasn't already on, so we advised the consumers, along with ourselves, to pursue the matter through trading standards. Tim Kiahan heads up the Caerphilly Trading Standards team, and over the next few months, he discovered Hathaway had installed a total of five stoves all around the Caerphilly area. Investigations revealed that Hathaway was actually not only fitting the stoves poorly, but they weren't safe, and also he was holding himself up to be HITAS accredited, um, and in fact using fake documentation to prove that fact. Tim Kiahan's team spoke with other customers and discovered Hathaway had been issuing invoices which stated he was HITAS registered. He'd even got hold of an actual HITAS certificate, which proved your stove has been fitted by a genuine HITAS installer. The installer takes a copy, one is sent to HITAS and one is held by the customer. 
Faking these is a criminal offence. What we have here are three copies of the fake heat ass certificates issued by Hathaway. But, of course, all the details about him are fake. Eventually, Trading Standards had enough evidence against Hathaway to stop him in his tracks. We eventually got Hathaway to court. He pleaded guilty to 12 offences under the Consumer Protection from Unfair Trading Regulations. I think the evidence was so strong because of the witnesses who were involved, um, along with the fact that we, were, we managed to get an expert to examine one of the installations and state that it was dangerous. The heaters inspection was carried out at Lisa's property and the stove Hathaway installed was classed as immediately dangerous. While Lisa and her family are safe, the cost of Hathaway's fakery has been substantial. This image is um, of the chimney liner, um, which should come all the way down the chimney, but in actual fact, because it was too short, um, Luke actually used 12 separate um, connectors to connect the chimney liner to the actual wood-burning stove, and they were just held together with fire cement. The damage to the house as a whole ran to around £2,000. There was damage to wallpaper, there was damage to my carpets. Um, our living room resembled a building site. We were left with lots of rubble. Our living room was just completely ruined. Hathaway also failed to install a carbon monoxide detector at any of the homes trading standards investigated. Installing these devices is essential if the stove is to pass British building regulations. I think it was really, really irresponsible and dangerous. I mean, something as simple as a carbon monoxide detector could have saved our life. You know, I mean, it just dreads me to think what would have happened had we lit it and gone to bed. Unfortunately, cases like this aren't isolated incidents. Heaters have had reports of nearly a dozen fake installers operating across the country, and they've started to track them down. Mike and Alan are part of Heaters' inspection team. They've had a tip-off from the builder of a potentially dangerous stove installation. What we know at this point is that somebody's gone in, they've carried out the installation, and there are a lot of things relating to the installation that um, have raised concerns of the uh, third party that's working in the property. Mike has checked the installer's name against Heatus' database, and it's not registered. To make matters worse, this unregistered installer has been presenting fake documentation. OK, so it's clearly evident that the Heatus logo has been faked uh, onto this document in a clear attempt to uh, basically uh, lead the consumer to, to believe that the installation has been carried out by a Heatus registered installer. The installer's documentation might be fake, but is the stove he's installed dangerous? The couple living here, who don't wish to be identified, paid several hundred pounds for a professionally installed stove. The team will be using this specialist miniature camera to take a look inside the flue, the piping which runs all the way up to the chimney. Right, so well, what Alan's doing now is feeding the camera up through the flue. The camera gradually makes its way up the flue. At the point where the flue's been attached to the house's existing chimney, the camera reveals a serious cause for concern. That there is your expanding foam. This is your flexible flue liner. And this is the system chimney that's being used to join the two to terminate the building. And this is what's being used as a, as a sealant between the two, which is totally against regulations and is a, a fire hazard. This material should never be used in this way. But the heaters team also want to inspect the work carried out in the attic. The workmanship around the ceiling of the flue here, the ceiling of the chimney stack, um, the, the distance to combustibles as this system chimney goes through the fabric of the building. It's up against the felt. This is deemed as combustible material. But you've also got a wooden batten that should have been trimmed back a minimum of 50 millimeter and that's only just 40 millimeter. This fake installer's botched job could have had tragic consequences for the couple living here. The ultimate scenario would be that there could have been a fire within the chimney or it could have you know, caused combustion here 
up against the wood here. It really is an accident waiting to happen, to be honest. Mike explains the situation to the couple and recommends some approved installers in their area. He also advises them to contact Trading Standards. An investigation has been launched into this fake installer and is ongoing. Earlier we saw 